All right, y'all, it's Therapy Thursday with Dr. David Chow. My dog is coming up in here, bringing up in here Dr. David Chow. And let me say this slowly because I truly mean this. I'm so happy to see you because I almost died this weekend, Dr. David Chow. I don't know what the hell. Actually, I do know. Um, I have something called rhabdo, and there's other syllables after it that I don't know how to pronounce. But long story short, I want you to tell people what I had and then I'm going to tell people about the experience of what I had. What did I have, Doc? Well, you know, I got to say, I'm not completely sure because rhabdo is very relatively unusual in a rhydromyolysis, relatively unusual in active, healthy people. Now, you are right about potentially dying. Corey Stringer, we all remember Corey Stringer, in the heat mm. of Mankato training camp, overheated, right? Heat stroke so severe that he basically died from rhabdomyolysis, which is muscle breakdown, circulate throughout your body, then kidney shut down because it gets over flooded with the breakdown products. And uh, it went very, very south. I mean, that was tragic, Corey Stringer dying in training camp, big offensive lineman in the heat, heat stroke case there. I'm Curious. I'm glad you're here to talk about it. How did you get rhabdo? That's not that common. Working out you're that right. hard in the heat or something else? I don't know. Let's break it down. Oh uh, man, uh, look. You know I live my life with levity, so I laugh at my pain. But this is my second case with it. Slight case. Both times they said I had a slight case. Got there to the hospital fast enough. Uh, first case happened ten years ago. Um, I didn't think anything of it because it was just full body cramps. Why didn't I think anything of it? It's because it was my fourth time having full body cramps. Had it once in college, ice bath, you'll be fine, go home, take a nap, see you at tomorrow's practice. I was okay. Then it happened two times in the league where just full body cramps, I'm okay. Salt pills, you know the whole routine, more Pedialyte, pickle juice, water, etc. I'm okay. Now, it happened when I was working out at uh, Wild Card Gym, Freddie Roach, and Manny Pacquiao Gym. I'm in there doing too much. I had on a plastic suit on top of me, who already sweats as soon as I say hello. And I get into the car, try to, you know, start the car, put my hand on the steering wheel, arm lock up. Then, foot lock up. Next thing I know, I can't drive. And I'm literally going to ESPN. Max Kellerman is the one who save my life. I'm in the car and I'm telling them I can't come upstairs right now. I'm going to be a few minutes late. I'm having cramps. Still making light of it. Max calls right back. You can't come upstairs because you're cramping? That sounds way worse. So he called Dr. Clapper, a uh, friend of the show. And next thing you know, I'm in, a, I'm in an Uber going to the hospital. And they say, thank God you got here because you have a slight case of rhabdo. But I still haven't gotten to what happened this weekend, Doc. This is what I did this weekend. On Wednesday, I start cutting carbs, so no more carbs. I should go low carbs. I went no carbs. Friday night, three hours in the hot tub with the kids. We clowning. I'm in the hot tub stretching. Saturday morning, I wake up, infrared sauna, 40 minutes. That's kind of long for me. Get a massage, deep tissue. I got a masseuse who is like Shrek. He bigger than me, and he just be pounding. Rawr. So... Then I play pickleball in 95 degrees for three hours straight. Next thing I know, I come in the house, Doc. I'm walking around, cramp here. Okay, you fine, stretch it. Cramp there, stretch that one. Now you can't stretch the other one because it's cramping on both sides, both legs. I am laying on my floor in my basement and my son comes in. Now I'm starting to cry a little bit because he's crying. And he's like, Daddy, you can't move and stuff. I said, no, I'm okay. I'm going to be fine. He's like, no, you're wrong. Something's wrong. I had to call 911 myself. And then they come downstairs. Everyone's alerted. And I go to the hospital. Two days of IVs. And now I'm back here. Not stronger than ever, but I'm getting better. So that's what happened to me, Doc. That, I did that's way That's a crazy much. story. I mean, you, you're, you're really getting it. You're working out hard. I mean, that's muscle breakdown. Yes, heat and muscle breakdown, right, are two of the big ingredients Thus, the Corey Stringer was a very extreme case of it, right? And thankfully, yeah. yours is not as extreme. But it's still very unusual to happen. I honestly would get checked out. Is there something underlying in you uh, that makes mm. you more sensitive? And it makes sense 
you know, and metabolically, look, we know in football, look, we know we give IVs before games and halftime and so forth. And there are definitely people who cramp more than other people, right? I'm not saying that that's rhabdo, but there are some players, like, I guess I got to get permission before I say it, that literally every single game would get an IV at halftime or before the game to avoid Mm -hmm. cramping. And you talk about your plastic suit and boxing. Well, you got the helmet and uh, pads and the heat and everything else on and going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, and, uh, you know, mom always says, wear your hat in the cold, right? Because heat escapes out of your head. Well, there ain't no escaping the heat with the helmet, et cetera. Uh, 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 kind of, but rhabdo it really can't be serious if it overwhelms your body. Thankfully, it didn't. But, yeah, that's you are working out hard, my friend. <laughs> you are hitting it hard. But good to see you hydrating there. But you know what? I didn't know all this was going on at all, and uh, I missed you last week. But I actually saw you all last week in Anne Marie. You want to know why? My phone. Well, like I don't know how to work my phone, but here's ten years, and your wedding pictures popped up on the thing. I got a whole album, down, and and it was hot down there too, right in Mexico. Uh, uh, you got married in your in your 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 fly white suit, all this riz and all this. Thing, you know. I saw a whole album on my phone. Usually it's kid stuff that pops up, but that was a nice surprise last week. So congratulations on a decade of uh, marriage. Oh, Marie. appreciate it, man. I can't believe it. a decade of marriage. And that's part of the reason why I was working out so hard. We went on a staycation down to Dana Point. I looked down and I saw nothing but the round mound of, of food. And I was like, yo, you got to get some of this off you, bro. I can't go poolside and hide under the water and shoulder level the whole trip, so I had to get after it. But, Doc, there are other guys who try to attack that round mound, too. Jason Kelsey is trying to lose weight or is losing weight. What are you doing? Well, this is what I always say. NFL players, especially linemen, offensive, even defensive linemen, rarely stay at the same weight when they're done. They're usually either up or down, right? Yep, and yep. Jason Kelsey, I was already at 277. Apparently, he played at 295, and he's going to go down, he says, maybe to 250. Nick Hardwick went from maybe 290. Right? He probably was never – he, 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 he registered at 305, but he was putting weights in his pants you know, et cetera. And <laughs> right, he famously right. lost a lot of weight, Matt Burke, et cetera. I think guys in general, look, when you're playing football and you're on the line, you have to maintain a certain weight. The yeah. guys who struggle to put on the weight and keep the weight naturally lose the weight because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're done playing. The guys who struggle struggle to make weight, keep weight, as opposed to at a certain low level, balloon up typically because you're not working out the same way although you probably are the way you get wrapped up so it's the very <laughs> unusual person especially no, NFL it, player almost it's all of them but especially that. linemen to say the same either you're going up or you're going down you're going it's up. always a struggle yeah. I like how you said it and it's actually the intelligent way so I'm gonna lend myself to your genius however I used to look at it way different doc I used to say look If you get fat when you're done, it's just because you're not running as much and you got lazy when you were done. And I said, when you lose all that weight, you lose 50 to 100 pounds overnight when you were playing, your ass was on some steroids or some some human growth, something (laughs) that kicked. I used to always say, I'm like, dog, there's no way. You're 22 years old and you weigh 300 pounds. And you're running all day and night. And then you are 42 and you lose 100 pounds? And I'm like... How, Sway? Well, what metabolism, Sway? What diet are you using? So I used to always look at guys like, how do you lose 50, 100 pounds? I never looked at it like it was a struggle to even get to that 300. I looked at it like, "Mm mm-hmm, something helped you stay 300. I I don't know Jason Kelsey, and he's not lost 100. He's lost 20 or whatever. But Nick Hardwick lost 100 pounds, right? And and I'll talk about this since you bring up the thing. Yeah, I get the the eyebrow raise there, okay? I get it. I get it. (laughs) But he was a guy who was struggling to maintain weight the whole time. And then I, everyone has this, well, what's happening here? Then I had dinner with the guy. First of all, you know, he's a nutritional, he's a 
assistant line coach for the for the Chargers now. Or the yeah, yeah. San Diego. I still say San Diego Chargers. But in Let any go. case, uh, uh, yeah. the uh, the uh, I had dinner with him, and when I saw what he ate for dinner, and then he told me what his meals. Are. Okay, I get why you lost a hundred pounds. <laughs> You're someone who's already you know struggling to maintain a weight, and and he was cut right and he had like zero body fat when he went down to 190 or 195 or whatever he was so i'll de- i don't know about everybody but i'll defend nick hardwick on that one that wasn't a steroid guy that lost weight so it can happen is all i'm saying yeah but it doesn't happen if you just like hey i'm not doing nothing i just stopped playing football <laughs> and lost the way okay that starts to raise suspicion this dog was working out like crazy and eating like a bird you know in terms of what yeah. it was in a very strict diet so yeah, let me strictly say I don't say Nick Harwick or Jason Kelsey. I'm just saying somebody out there lost 100 pounds because they had some fake weight on them. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Some of those guys, it's just my laziness coming out. I'm mad at those guys who lose that much, that fast, and my ass got to go to the hospital and still don't lose the weight. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm coming from. Um, let's hey, keep hey, it in. Marcellus, I'm going to interject oh, yeah. here since I said San Diego yeah. Chargers. What gives? The Chargers couldn't get the stuff done in San Diego, and this week, Jacksonville got millions and millions of dollars and the Panthers got millions and millions of dollars from their local city to rebuild their stadiums and and stay in the city for whatever, whatever. They got big, fat public assistance deals. We couldn't get that in San Diego. We couldn't come close. I know, man. So I San Diego fans. Off my chest, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, look, San Diego fans get mad at me when I tell them, look, would your ass drive two hours up to 405 to make double your net worth? I think I would too. So I don't, I, one, I don't slight the Spanos. Two, they were trying for 20 years to get that damn deal done. I know when I played there, they were talking about a new stadium, and they ain't get one done in the to what 2019, 2020 in LA. And look, Carolina and Jacksonville. Let's just say, not the same amount of events, theater, attractions. So. <laughs> They gonna find a way to get that money because if in LA, you I mean San Diego go to LA, San Diego's like we surfing. San Diego say I'm retired, don't touch my money. I just see that that was just a simple play for the ownership to double their net worth, and I understood why the fan base was like, not my money, not my money. No, no I, I get it, and part of that is also California, right? I mean, California yeah. teams have not gotten public money, and it's just the local environment. I, I'm gonna say something because you know you don't hold anything thoughts in you let it fly and i'm usually more reserved right Uh, kind of noticed but this is so passionate about this i have to say this and i really hope it doesn't go viral i hope it doesn't go super viral i don't want to get banned from from the chargers i still i i actually honestly really do like the spanoses john and i got married on the same Uh day i'd like dean the whole deal here's my thing i'm with you i look at it as the Chargers did do everything they could to stay. And if you were the owner, I was the owner, any fan was the owner, you would have done the same thing. And I think the Chargers did everything they could to stay in San Diego. I'm with you on that. And I've heard about it. I've seen it on the back end. So I support the Spanoses on that. And I'll probably get hate from San Diego fans for that statement. But I don't begrudge Dean or the Spanoses for leaving San Diego. I kind of do as a San Diego resident for how they left San Diego. Oh. Let me give you a simple analogy. Mm-hmm. Let's, and it's not this, but let's just, it just, I explain this to people who don't live here this way. Let's say Dean or the Chargers are dad and the city of San Diego slash politicians are mom. I'm a fan, I live here, I'm just a kid, I'm a kid. I'm a ch- child in this relationship. Mom and dad weren't giving, getting along. Dad said he wanted a home-cooked meal when he came home. Mom said, that ain't the way that it works. Dad said, I, all the other husbands are getting that. And how come I'm not getting that? And if you don't like it, I, I need this, I need this. Finally, one day, dad said, I want a divorce. I'm going to marry Miss L.A. Miss L.A. is going to make me happy, make me dinner, whatever you want. And dad said, peace. I, people get divorced in life. I get it. But what about the kids? You didn't address the kids. You said peace. And you said, 
kids, I'm in LA, you can drive up and find me. You didn't send a Christmas card. You didn't send a birthday card. You didn't call to check on how we are. You didn't say, I love you kids. I'm sorry, but dad needs to be happy and move up to LA, come visit. You're still, you're still my children. So I a little bit as a San Diego person Report. begrudge how the team left, not that they left. Okay, we could go all day on this one and those are valid points. I do know sometimes you do say goodbye, but people don't want to hear that, so they don't even hear that you said goodbye. And you know, what do you want to do? How many press That's conferences can I hold? <laughs> you know, how many times? You, I know I've done it. I'll be like, all right, thank you guys for everything. And like, where are you going? You don't care. About, I'm like, wait a minute. What? I'm moving on. You have to move on, and we're going to move on together, right? I get all that, yeah. but yeah, great points, man. I love that analogy right there. Or give me an analogy right now. What's going on with these NFL stadiums that's putting in this grass for the soccer and the World Cup? What's going on, Doc? Yeah, World Cup's coming. Soccer, Copa America. Six NFL stadiums that are indoors that are artificial grass. Put in real grass because that's a requirement to host it. And, you know, of course, the players union, you know, upset about why we need grass. Actually, I'm going to, on my podcast in two weeks, going to talk to Dr. Tom Mayer chief medical director for the NFLPA. We're going to talk about some of these things with him. But they installed new grass, temporary grass, for the soccer. Well, why can't you do that for football players? Well, let me tell you. First of all, have you heard the complaints about the soccer? They're saying the, the role isn't right with the ball and what have you. And you have 160-pound guys running around on it, making sure that the ball rolls well, as opposed mm. to 300-plus-pound guys tearing up the field, right? And Temporary mm. grass fields don't last indoors. Okay, it's just money. Keep putting it in. But what happened in Houston when they put in grass indoors and it was pallets? Wes Welker tore his ACL on an edge, on an yeah, uneven yeah, edge, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. unless you design the systems like some are, where you're rolling out the entire grass and exchanging it in Las Vegas, in, in Arizona, or whatever, you're not going to be able to get this done. In New Jersey, the Giants and the Jets, that stadium, there's no way two teams, you can't play Sunday and then Monday night. And then also, <laughs> and that's obviously outdoors, but inclement weather, the whole deal. Uh, yep. You know, unless stadiums are designed for it from the get, it's going to be hard to make that transition. And here's the one that blew my mind. In Indianapolis last week, they installed a pool, not a Jacksonville Jaguars in the, you know, fan pool. On the field, they installed a pool, Olympic-sized pool, and the U.S. Olympic swim team held their swim trials in that big old dome there, indoors. In it. An entire regulation Olympic-sized pool. That blew my mind. And apparently for the Olympics, that's what's going in at SoFi. Crazy. Man, it's crazy, yeah. Doc. And every time I see things like this, because, you know, I grew up from humble beginnings, as they say, right? So I didn't grow up with a ton of money, but a ton of love. I didn't know the world at large. I didn't know anything, right? I'm just listening to whatever they tell me the world is. When you become an adult, that's how it goes, right? Figuring it out as I go along. Now I'm 49 years along on that journey. I always come back to this place and it's sad, but it's really the reality. Money talks, dog. I mean, we it's, there are so many stumbling blocks until you say, uh, Copa, World Cup, money. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could do that. We could do that. But before when it was about health or injury, eh, it cost too much. Like the incentives shape the behavior so much in this world that they will put an Olympic pool on the field, but don't put the best field on the field for the players. And everything I look at, that's why I don't care about race. People get mad at me because they're like, Marcellus, you just don't see it. I was like, I see it, but I know what can overtake it. Money, the color of green is greater and grander than black and white. I've seen black people and white people have the most harmonious relationships when money's involved. So I just look at this world crazy, man. They are ripping up fields just so bigger money, bigger bank can have their opportunities. Do you see it that and, way? And no question. And part of the reason isn't just, you know, the field and this, that, the other. It's a, look at what happened in Dallas. Jerry Jones built this nice new stadium. 
he holds so many different events on it. You know, he hosts parties down there, corporate events and other things. <laughs> and, and you can do high school football games and college. You, you can do you can do the Mike Tyson fight, you know, there and, and have people on the grass in concerts and whatever, because it's fake grass. If it were real grass, you got to keep off the grass uh, to keep the health of the mm. grass. And you got mm -hmm. built this billion dollar stadium and what are you going to put in there? So that's no question green is part of the equation, not just green grass, but green money. Yes. Yes. And speaking of green, uh, they're trying to make some of our NILs, our legacies green forever. When it comes to Al Michaels, now his voice being used in AI on some of the game coverage. Is that, is that really happening? I, I, is that I, don't, real? I don't understand it. I mean, <laughs> unless I missed the news cycle, did something happen to Al Michaels? I mean, is yeah, he right. actually doing the Olympics coverage? I mean, yeah. but they're going to use an AI Al Michaels voice to do the highlights. Look, I get it. Um, you know, uh, uh, it sounds, it sounded pretty good. The sample that they did, it's amazing what AI can do, but you have Al Michaels. <laughs> he didn't get rabdo when something happened to him, did he? I mean, what, 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 what gives? Oh, I mean, I, maybe what it is, I guess, is because it's different hours and time and Olympic highlights come in and the packages and timing, and they just can't get Al to the studio and they want timely highlights, right? Because Al time tired. differences and this, that, the other. <laughs> maybe that's what it is. But mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm all for this. IA is all interesting. And oh, my God. Uh, immortality and legacy now with AI, but Al's still here. Can we have, I mean, the, the same Al? I mean, maybe it's like, you know, if you actually type out capital A, small L, Al Michaels versus capital A, capital I, AI Michaels, maybe they're just trying to slide <laughs> that in and we won't notice the difference. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think with the time change, plus his age, plus like you said, the packages come in all times of day and night. Al, like, look, I'm putting eight hours in max. The rest of that, y'all can lend out my voice and technology, as long as I get my money, and then we good, which sounds amazing on the surface, except you know how power corrupts and absolute power corrupts all. <laughs> like, It's going to turn into, okay, now we can use Al Michaels even if he's not working. Then it's going to say, okay, we're going to use Al Michaels forever. And then poor little student, who's going to Syracuse, who's going to try to intern at ESPN one day to become the next Al Michaels, ain't going to get the gig because they're using Al Michaels in 2098. And it's like, dog, you got to have a shelf life, I feel, on you and you commentating in that experience. Or why would you ever use anybody? It should be John Madden instead of Tony Romo still, right? Well, I get it. And, and that's what I'm saying might be coming. And look, Al Michaels may like it this time, but next time around, hey, we have a choice of using Bob Costas AI at this much green. And Al Michaels, you want this much green? I mean, what's going to happen there? Or you're right. Why do we need, no offense to Tom Brady, but let's just use John Madden's AI voice and, and do the games live uh, with John Madden uh, kind of thing. It's an interesting world uh, out there for sure. Yeah, man, we've entered one of them Will Smith movies. I don't know which one, but it's happening. We are all there. Dr. David Child, thank you for all the therapy talk on this Thursday. And I will get my rhabdo checked out for underlining reasons because something's going on, man. I'm not the guy that should be having these kind of health scares. But thank you, man, for the peace and, and the calm. I appreciate you, brother. All right. Thank you. All right, that was Dr. David Child made me feel better about my situation. Why? Greater understanding. Uh, something going on with me <laughs> when I, I mean, look, I did way too much overexertion to the fullest, but still, come on, come on, body, respond, react, get it right, man. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of Never Shut Up. Love rocking with y'all. You guys have an amazing day. Um, man, I love this summer right now, especially this week. No camp for the kids. They all chilling. Man, we having our own summer camp at the crib. So hope you guys are enjoying this break with the itty bitties and loving life. Have an amazing day. I know I will. <laughs>